Global environmental changes and other anthropogenic impacts are rapidly transforming the structure and functioning of ecosystems worldwide. These changes are leading to land degradation with an estimated 25% of the global land surface being affected. Arid and semi-arid systems cover 41% of the Earth's land surface, with one fifth of this categorised as degraded and degrading at a rate of 12 million hectares per year. In the resource-rich and biodiverse semi-arid Pilbara region of Western Australia, the landscape is disturbed due to established and emerging iron ore mine operations. The need to develop cost-effective large-scale solutions to restore these landscapes has become imperative to preserve biodiversity and achieve functionality and sustainability in these ecosystems. The Pilbara is a, a floristic region uh, in the northwest of our state in Western Australia where it's known for its ancient rocks, uh, very high contents of iron ore which uh, has in turn created a large uh, mineral industry for us where we're mining these rocks for the exploitation of iron ore. Um, but the Pilbara with its floristics and our ancient nature has got a lot of beautiful uh, floristics and, and animals throughout the region. And in terms of species diversity, it is one of the most floristically rich uh, deserts in the world, about 1,800 species. So it's ancient, unique to the landscape, uh, provides a lot of overlapping Hello, my name is Todd Erickson. My, my role in the Restoration Seed Bank Initiative is project manager and research scientist and largely just help and assist getting the, the research programs underway. So some of the challenges with, with the high impact iron ore mining is the, the ever increasing large uh, footprint of each mine pit. So cumulatively it adds up to currently about 2,300 square kilometres or 230,000 hectares. So with that large impact uh, results in a lot of uh, requirement to reinstate a lot of the pre-disturbed landscape. So these restoration challenges require large seed inputs and a lot of efforts to get a lot of those native species assembled back into their uh, pre-disturbed state. So the challenges are the real scaled efforts, the cost it will take and understanding the biology that we don't currently know from the seed and the soil perspective. I'm Amber, a PhD student at the University of Western Australia. In the Pilbara region of Western Australia, mining plays a big role in the degradation of our soils through the removal of topsoil. Um, for those of you that don't know, topsoil is the top 20 centimetres of the soil profile, which holds our soil nutrients, our vital soil sea bank, and also below ground uh, microorganisms. Um, because they have no topsoil, instead they must use an alternative growth material, which is a soil taken from within the mining pit which hasn't seen the light of day for millions of years. So as you can imagine, it's quite different to your topsoil, structurally and biologically. Um, and in my honours project, we found that plants grown in this media had stunted growth, which unfortunately is really detrimental to the success of our rehab. So what can we do about this? Through industry support, the Restoration Seed Bank Initiative was created to uncover why rehabilitation of these arid sites was so difficult and to develop strategies to overcome these hurdles. The Restoration Seed Bank Initiative was a, a project funded by some, some of the industry in the region and it was largely to try to align a lot of the seed biological uh, impediments that we know we have up there with a lot of the soil ecology and understanding the, the large impact that we have in the reconstructed landforms. So the RSB is a, a team of six of us, um, including a whole suite of postgraduate students, and we're tackling a whole range of things and um, trying to contribute to the, to the end product of biodiversity restoration. My name is Miriam Muñoz Rojas, and uh, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Western Australia. In my current role, um, I manage the soil program of the Restoration Seed Bank Initiative. Um, and uh, within this program, we study soil plant relationships, uh, soil micro communities. How can we use all this understanding to improve our soils in in restoration context? Uh, uh, with a particular focus on arid systems and the Pilbara region in northwestern Australia as a case study. Once the soil program discovered that the use of alternative growth media on rehabilitation sites was stunting plant growth, the team began conducting in-field experiments to investigate how we can increase soil recovery and overall soil health on these rehab sites. Welcome to our controlled environmental facility in the Pilbara. Today we're going to show you all the experiments that we're conducting in this facility. Come with me. With industry support, we have been able to use this controlled environmental facility located on site. In this facility, we are able to test a variety of climate scenarios under field conditions. The facility is fitted with probes to monitor soil moisture, temperature, 
UV and wind, and a weather station outside that also has a rain gauge. Currently, the facility has two learning experiments running, one with 64 seed plots, assessing plant emergence in five different soil types and the different rainfall regimes, and the second one monitoring long-term plant soil relationships using different plant communities and soil substrate. In these plots, we're conducting a long-term experiment uh, using different mine substrates and vegetation communities uh, to assess uh, uh, vegetation survival and plant soil interactions. We have established plots uh, three years ago and um, recreating um, potential scenarios in real restoration settings. Uh, so we're investigating and monitoring these plots and in looking at um, how plant communities will affect the soil function of this uh, soils and how can we use this knowledge and uh, to improve restoration outcomes. And, uh, but so far it's very clear that the uh, higher diversity we have in our plant communities reflects in a higher soil uh, microbial diversity, higher levels of nutrients, carbon, water retention, uh, so that indicates that it is critical to have a biodiverse mixed community. In addition to restricting plant growth, previous studies have found that mining waste also reduces plant drought tolerance. To combat this effect, PhD student Amber is researching ways to reconstruct these waste soils using inorganic soil amendments such as gypsum and urea. Gypsum is known to improve soil water retention, while urea is to increase plant available nitrogen. In December 2017, 45 plots were constructed on site to assess soil recovery and plant establishment across five soil treatments, two of which were amended with varying doses of gypsum and urea. On top of this, three plant communities were tested to assess how plants' community structure is influenced by the addition of amendments. In conjunction with this inorganic amendment plot study, a large field trial was underway on an active rehabilitation site where we are testing a variety of inorganic and organic amendments to see how they interact with the soil and plant recruitment over time. Through this, we're hoping to reinstate our soil natural processes to improve our plant establishment and overall restoration success. When assessing soil quality and biological health, we use two tests in combination with microbial DNA analysis. The first is a 24-hour CO2 Solvita lab test that gives you a quick and easy indication of the level of microbial activity present in soil treatments based on the amount of CO2 emitted from the soil over a 24-hour period. The second is an infield assessment of soil respiration which accounts for all below ground interactions and is useful when assessing soil changes over seasons. Back in Perth, Western Australia, and in collaboration with the University of New South Wales, Dr Miriam munoz Rojas and honours student Melissa are researching how inoculating seeds with native cyanobacteria can improve seed germination, emergence and survival. So the cyanobacteria research is quite a novel one. This is uh, being um, investigated uh, in collaboration with uh, groups from Spain. And uh, we basically looking at how can we use cyanobacteria from soil biocraft to uh, as an asset to, uh, on the one hand, uh, improve germination uh, of native plants that we use for restoration, and also uh, to enhance soil function uh, because we know that these organisms uh, fix nitrogen and carbon and has an ecological engineering role in the soil by uh, improving uh, aggregate stability and, um, and water retention. Hi, I'm Alyssa and I'm a student at UW. My project is looking at the effect cyanobacteria has on the native plant species in the Pilbara for uh, post mine site restoration. So, what is cyanobacteria? So, cyanobacteria are a component in biocrust that exists almost anywhere and they have also been shown in studies in agriculture and as well as restoration to improve plant growth. And so for in agri so in agriculture it has shown to reduce the need for fertilizers and as well as improve the quality of crops. And it also has been shown to re uh, prevent desertification in places like China. So for my experiment, uh, there hasn't been a lot of um, research in uh, what effect cyanobacteria has on the species in the Pilbara, so we'll be looking at that and I'll be showing some of the stuff that um, I do to prepare for experiments with it. 
So the aim of my experiment is to determine the effects of bioprime seeds in waste substrates from mine sites, also referred to as waste soil and topsoil. So I've prepared a mixture of uh, four cyanobacteria species for the biopriming solution. It consists of moss stalk, cyclonema, leptolimbia, and microcolumes. And I would be I put the seeds in the solution to bioprime them before sowing them in the different soil types. Through the integration of soil science into arid zone restoration practices, we have gained a huge understanding of the below ground systems of these degraded landscapes. This research has given us an insight into the limitations and challenges facing restoration of arid landscapes, which in turn has enabled us to develop cost effective landscape scale restoration solutions with the potential to benefit arid zone restoration worldwide.